Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked here on the channel. This is the series where I talk about every single book on my shelves because, oh I can't think of a good one for this one. Because I want to. There we go. Today we are talking about Elizabeth Bear's Karen Memory. <laughs> Some quick disclaimers before we start. I bought this book myself or was given it as a gift. I genuinely don't remember. Regardless of where books come from, nobody's paying me to talk about books except my patrons and all opinions are my own. I'm going to keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible while still talking about the book as a whole. If you do want to go in knowing absolutely nothing, pause the video, come back when you've read it, we'll talk then. And I will link the story graphic for the book down below in case you want to check out any user generated content warnings. I would highly recommend looking them up for this book, uh, especially to do with violence against women. Just, just look them up, do yourself a favour, look up the content warnings. This is a steampunk fantasy historical sapphic novel that originally came out in February of 2015. So it's getting on a little bit now. We're eight years on from the original publication, almost nine years. It's by Elizabeth Bear, who has written all sorts of stuff over a number of years. I think this is the only book of hers I've actually read, but I suspect I've read some of her short stories as well. I haven't fully checked. We are in an alternate 1878 in the Pacific Northwest of this steampunk alternate world, where our main character, Karen, Karen Memory, which is spelt differently because it's Irish, but that doesn't make a good book title, is a teenage lady of the night. I'm trying not to get demonetized by YouTube. She sells things for money. The things are her. Anyway, in this book, Karen has to track down a serial killer who is connected to two various things in the town and gets caught up in a much broader conspiracy. It is one of those books where a character gets kind of swept up in an adventure. How long will my camera battery last? We may never know. I think steampunk fiction there is a lot of it. I've read very, very little. I'm aware it's a hugely specific genre. I'm sure there are books that people absolutely adore and authors that are writing heaps in there. I've not read very much of it. I find steampunk to be its own particular joy. Uh, just the world building I find very interesting. I like a lot of the alternate history elements that come into it, which I appreciate. Fun story, uh, my granny was once on holiday at a place where there was a steampunk convention and the only thing she remembers is that they were incredibly polite. She always says that everybody who was in steampunk was incredibly well-mannered. I don't think that does apply to the entire community. Apparently everyone she met was lovely, so there you go. I just think it makes for a fun world. Uh, for me, it feels very fresh because I don't read a lot of it. I expect that would feel different if you read Oodles. However, the world building, very cool. It's kind of the element where a lot of the houses have risen up or the streets have risen down, so you have to climb a lot of places. There's just some cool world elements to it. I thought it was good. I'll say some of it I found hard to picture and then things would happen later in the book that I went, that wasn't at all how I was imagining that, never mind. But that does happen to me fairly often, so maybe that's me and not the book. If you like a sapphic romance, this book has a sapphic romance in it with our main character Karen. How lovely. Uh, I thought it was a nice romance. I won't say it completely knocked me off my feet. It didn't make me swoon, but it was very pleasant. Uh, if you like a sapphic book, or you need a sapphic book to fill a prompt, this is one. I found the end of this book to be incredibly moving. There's some really lovely found family elements to it. A lot of those tropes you know I love. Uh, the last 200 pages or so really got me. I found myself tearing up at moments. Uh, I think it's a very solid mystery plot. I think that the threats feel very real. The fun adventure keeper kind of elements to it feel very enjoyable. Overall, that element of the book is very well structured. One of the criticisms that has been levelled against this book various times, uh, and I will add my voice to it, is that I think that there is a lot of good effort representation that isn't great execution, as in an attempt has been made, but perhaps because it was eight years ago, or perhaps just good intentions don't necessarily mean good effect, a lot of the representation falls a little bit short. There is a trans character who's not immensely well handled in my opinion uh, and in the opinion of some other people who've read the book. So while I think it's a good attempt to build a diverse world and it's not written out of malice and it's not trying to represent people inauthentically, it's just not particularly authentic. The other thing I'll mention is that Karen's internal voice, which is the voice of the book, is a little bit hard to get into. Uh, she's very much written written in such a way that you hear her accent while you're reading. It's not phonetically written, it's just her style of speaking. Uh, obviously that makes the book feel very immersive in a lot of ways. I found it very hard to get into and I think it's why I like the end part of the book so much more, in part, is because by that point you are settled into the accent. It reminded me a little bit of The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Murder, which has that same character with a very strong, uh, I guess, like kind of generic a poor person in a 
fantasy historical world kind of accent. Uh, it just takes a little while to sit in. I'm sure it's interesting in terms of the slang she uses. I found it was a barrier to me enjoying the early parts of the book. But obviously that's an intentional thing, it's not a case that they accidentally wrote it that way. <laughs> Thinking of the book as a whole, I really like that ending, but it's a lot of beginning to get through before you get there. I think had the whole book had the high pace, the adventure, the... I was trying to think of it without spoiling it, kind of the big swings that the ending of the book has, I think I would have liked it a lot more. Once those big swings start happening, it's a great book, but the setup, there is so much of it and it is a lot to get through for a book that isn't very long. So if you are planning on reading this, despite the things that I've mentioned that make it not as great to read, I would say power through the beginning, it gets better towards the end. Other things you might like to read if you have read this or if you're thinking about it, the only other book that I really wanted to bring up or that really sprung to mind for me was A Dead Gin in Cairo, which is a fantastic alternate history book about a queer detective in alternate Cairo. It's a wonderful story, I've talked about it so many times, there's a video up, I will link it, so good, love it so much. My camera battery has lasted, but I don't want to jinx it, so we're going to jump right into the overall thoughts. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this. I'm glad that I've read it, it's not a case that I feel hugely disappointed that I picked it up, it's just not a book that I'm likely to read again, and I think so much of that comes down to, while I like the plot and I like the ideas and I like the spirit behind the book, I didn't find the characters compelling enough within that story to make me completely fall for it, and it's just not a book that I'll pick up again, which means that it is going to be leaving my shelves, but it is now documented on the channel for the rest of eternity. So I don't necessarily recommend picking this up, but I think if you already have it, then it's not necessarily going to be a bad time. And I also wouldn't write off reading Elizabeth Baird based on this book. I'd read something else she's written. This just wasn't my favourite style of writing. Have you read this? Do you have plans to? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the ghosts who haunt me over on Patreon. They support the channel and in return get early access to videos, bonus content, live streams and more. If you'd like to join their number, that's linked below as well. Thank you so much to you for watching. That's all from me before the battery dies. I will see you in the next one. It's done a piece of bloopers now. Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another episode of Overbooked here on the channel. My battery's gonna die and I don't have a spare that's charged. Ah. Why have I written world building twice that's unhelpful to me?